Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about what's happening in the Russian economy and specifically what's happening with Russian coal. Now, don't worry, you haven't been transported back to the 70s. You're not watching me on one of those giant televisions that you actually had to get out of your chair and turn over manually rather than using a remote control. You haven't got your afro back, your bell-bottom trousers, you're not at the disco, and you don't have to send me a letter of complaint using your typewriter. Coal is actually still relevant today. And would you believe that the world consumption of coal in 2023 was actually the highest ever. So despite the fact that everybody's talking about moving to renewable energy and moving away from dirty fossil fuels, coal is still hugely in demand and is still growing. And the main driver as to why coal consumption is increasing is because China and India are still using it in huge quantities to produce electricity. So in today's video, we'll talk about what's happening with Russian coal because over the last couple of years, Russia has hugely increased its exports to both China and India because, as you'll know if you follow the channel, they've become Russia's two most important trading partners, predominantly for oil, but obviously when you're talking about oil, you can also have a chat about what's going on with coal and start increasing your exports. However, the USA has locked onto this and in February 2024 introduced sanctions on Russia's two biggest coal producers, Suek and Mekel. And as a result of that, the exports to India and China have fallen dramatically in March. And the impact of these sanctions now has the potential to further reduce Russia's revenues. So in today's video, we'll talk about what's going on with the global production and consumption of coal, because I think you'll be surprised at how much is still being used and produced globally. We'll talk about what's happening with China because they're the world's largest consumer of coal. They're actually the world's largest producer of coal as well, but they don't produce enough. And so therefore they have to import from countries like Russia. We'll talk about the sanctions that have been applied against Russian coal and what the impact of that is going to be on Russia's revenues. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary. So what I think is going on with regards to Russia's coal industry and what the impact of all of this will be on the Russian economy. But before we get started on all of that, I'd like to say, Thank you so much to everyone that's supporting this channel. Really, really appreciate all of your support. If you bought me a coffee or sent me a YouTube super thanks, thank you for the time and effort you've taken to do that. I really, really appreciate it. And if you're a long-term supporter of the channel, either through Patreon or Buy Me A Coffee membership or YouTube membership, thank you so much for that. It really keeps me motivated, keeps me making more videos. So thank you for your support. So just when you thought that everybody in the world was moving towards solar power, wind power and driving Teslas, unfortunately, I have to break the news to you that in 2023, the global use of coal hit an all time high. And the main driver for the increase in demand in coal has been the use in thermal power stations to produce electricity. And for the first time in 2023, the global amount of coal exported topped 1 billion tonnes. This chart shows the global consumption of coal dating back to 2002. And what this shows is that in 2023, for the first time, global consumption was more than 8.5 billion tonnes of coal. And when you look at the breakdown, more than half of the global demand came from China that consumed over 4.5 billion tonnes of coal in 2023. The world's second largest consumer is India, who consumed more than 1 billion tonnes of coal, followed by the other countries of Asia, the United States, the European Union, and then the rest of the world. And this chart shows the main driver for the increase in demand, which is the use of coal in electricity power stations. What this shows is that between 2020 and 2023, there has been a significant increase in the use of coal to produce electricity. And these charts show the amount of electricity being generated using coal by eight of the largest importing countries in the world. And these charts date back to the start of 2019. And what these charts show is that China, India and the Philippines have all increased the amount of electricity that they're generating using coal. And the amount generated by the other five countries has remained relatively constant. And this table provides a detailed breakdown of the world's largest consumers of coal. And what this shows is that China is by far the world's largest consumer of coal, consuming over 4.3 billion tonnes. India is the second largest consumer, consuming around 1 billion, followed by the United States at 730 million, Germany, Russia, Japan, 
South Africa, South Korea, Poland, and the 10th largest consumer of coal in the world is Australia, which consumes around 130 million tonnes. So what we've established so far in this video is that there is a strong demand for coal and that demand is continuing to increase remarkably. Even though we all think we're living in a renewable world, we're not. The majority of countries are still dependent on fossil fuels. But in terms of looking at the economics of this situation and establishing which countries are importing and which countries are exporting coal, we need to look at global production. Before we dive into having a look at the detailed figures, I thought we'd have a look at this graph because graphs are a really good visual representation to explain who's the biggest and who's the smallest in any situation. And what this chart shows is that China is by far the world's largest producer of coal. And as we just discussed, it's also the world's largest consumer, followed by India, which is the second largest consumer. Now, interestingly, the world's third largest producer of coal is Indonesia, who we haven't mentioned so far, followed by Australia, the United States, Russia, and then we've got the rest of the world. And this table gives us the detailed figures of the world's largest producers of coal. And what this shows is that China produces around 3.7 billion tonnes, compared with its demand of around 4.3 billion. So that means that China is a net importer of coal. China's demand for coal significantly exceeds its production. And the same applies to India, which is producing around 760 million tonnes, but has a demand of almost 1 billion. The United States is the world's third largest producer of coal, and it produces roughly around the same amount that it consumes. But the United States is still a net exporter because there are different categories of coal. So even though it's producing enough to serve its own demand, because that demand is slightly different to the production that it's actually delivering, it has to import some and it exports some. Australia is the world's fourth largest producer of coal, producing over half a billion tonnes a year. And that compares to demand of around 130 million. So Australia has a significant surplus and therefore is one of the world's largest exporters of coal. Indonesia is the world's fifth largest producer of coal, producing over half a billion tonnes, compared with the 100 million tonnes that it consumes. And that means that Indonesia is actually the largest exporter of coal in the world. Russia is the sixth largest producer and produces roughly double the amount that it consumes, making Russia the third largest exporter behind Indonesia and Australia. The seventh largest consumer of coal in the world is South Africa, followed by Germany, Poland and Kazakhstan. So Russia is the world's third largest exporter of coal and the biggest buyer of coal globally is China. So let's have a look at what's been happening with Russia's exports of coal over the last seven years. This chart shows the destination of Russia's coal exports between 2016 and 2023. And the color coding here relates to different destinations. And what this shows is that in 2016, Russia's largest purchaser of coal was the European Union, which accounted for around 40% of all Russian coal exports. The second largest market was Korea, which accounted for around 15%. China was the third largest, accounting for around 10%. Japan was the fourth largest buyer, accounting for around 7%. Turkey was number five, accounting for around 5%. The sixth largest buyer was Taiwan, followed by India and the rest of the world. If we now look at the situation in 2023, you can see that there's been a significant shift in terms of which countries are buying coal from Russia. The European Union has stopped making any purchases as a result of the sanctions that are being applied directly against Russia. Now, interestingly, when the first round of sanctions came in, they only applied to oil and gas and coal was not included because it was seen as something that was essential for a lot of countries to continue buying. And you can see that there was a really gradual tapering of those purchases as European countries voluntarily decided that they wanted to source their coal from other suppliers. So the European Union has stopped buying all of its coal imports from Russia. And obviously that's left a gaping hole in terms of where Russia was going to sell it to. And you can see that that hole has been filled entirely by China. And in 2023, China accounts for around 50% of all of Russia's exports. And this chart shows the breakdown of China's coal imports by origin over the past three years. 
And what this shows is that there was a significant increase in the volume of coal being imported from Russia in 2022 and 2023. Those volumes increased from 49.6 million tonnes in 2021 to 57.5 million in 2022 to 75.8 million in 2023. And just to put that into an economic context, Russian coal is trading for roughly around $100 per tonne. Russia's second largest purchaser of coal is Korea, which accounts for around 12%, followed closely by India, which has significantly increased its purchases over the last two years. As the sanctions have been applied against Russia and Russia has had to find new markets, India has become a willing buyer of Russian coal, predominantly because it's been offered good deals. India is very pragmatic and will take the deal that's best for the country. And as Russia was desperate to find new buyers, it offered advantageous prices to India. And so there's been a big increase in purchases from India. And there's also been a significant increase in purchases from Turkey for exactly the same reason. So the overall summary of this chart is very similar to what we've seen with oil and gas. Over the last few years, there's been a significant fall away in terms of Russia's exports to the European Union. And those exports have been predominantly replaced by a huge increase from China and also increases from India and Turkey. As I mentioned at the start of today's video, in February 2024, the USA identified Russia's two largest producers of coal, a business called Suek, which is a Siberian coal energy company, and another business called Mekel. And these two account for the vast majority of all of Russia's coal exports. And as a result of those specific sanctions, China and India have now become concerned about dealing with these businesses. And so we're starting to see a massive reduction in the purchases of Russian coal by Russia's two largest buyers. But it doesn't stop there because Mekel and Suek actually control the ports where all of the coal exports move from in Russia. So a lot of other companies that are producing coal and trading businesses that are buying coal and then finding buyers overseas also use those ports. And it's now been reported that those Russian businesses are avoiding the ports that are being run by Suek and Mekel. And as a result of this, those businesses are now struggling to be able to deliver the logistics to actually move the coal. So the knock-on implications of the sanctions that have been applied against the two largest producers are also having ramifications for all of the other coal businesses in Russia. So this is an absolute nightmare from Russia's perspective. This chart shows the volume of Russian coal exports to Asia, India and China between September 23 and February 24. And the scale on the left-hand side of this chart is measured in millions of tonnes and goes from zero at the bottom to 12 at the top. The blue bar charts show the exports to Asia, the orange bars show India and the green bars China. And what this shows is that between September and February, there's been a significant fall in the volume of coal that Russia is exporting. In September, Russia exported around 11 million tonnes of coal to Asia. However, by February, that figure was down to just over 8 million, which represents a fall of around 30%. And if we specifically look at the movement for China, in September, Russia exported around 5 million tonnes, and that figure increased to around 5.5 million in October. However, in February, that figure was down to around 3.5 million. And if we look at the situation for India, in September, Russia exported around 1.5 million tonnes. That figure increased to 2 million in October. However, in February, it was down to less than 1 million. And the figures for March 2024 have now been released and show that China reduced its purchases from Russia by 21% compared with the purchases for February. And the purchases by India were down to their lowest level since November 23. So what we're starting to see here is the impact of these sanctions causing India and China to decide that they no longer want to buy coal directly from Russia and they're purchasing from elsewhere. And this is obviously a major problem from Russia's point of view because they're the go-to markets. In the past, when Russia has had problems in terms of making sales, it's turned to China and India. But if China and India are now turning their back on Russia, it doesn't really have that many other options to go to. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because I think what's happening with coal exports from Russia is really fascinating. 
Up until you watched this video, I'm sure you thought that coal was dead in the water. It was yesterday's fuel. Nobody wants to deal with coal. It's dirty. It's messy. It's something from the dark ages. But as we've seen from the data in today's video, coal is on the up. And actually, global use of coal is at an all-time high. It's more popular today than it was in the 60s and 70s, which is hard to believe. But obviously, when you look at the breakdown of where that increase in demand is coming from, the majority of it is being driven by China, which is buying more than half of the world's coal supplies, followed by India and a few other countries. So we are seeing a shift, I think, in the developed world. There is a momentum towards renewable energy and a move away from things like the use of coal. But globally speaking, there is still strong demand for coal. And what we've seen is that Russia is the world's third largest exporter of coal. And because of the sanctions that have been applied against it over the last few years, Russia has lost its main market, which was the European Union. And as a result of that, it's pivoted in exactly the same way that it's done with oil and gas. And it's now selling a lot more of its coal directly into China and India. And China is the biggest buyer of Russian coal. Now, the USA has woken up to this fact because Russia is receiving over $100 billion per year from the sale of its coal. So it's a significant amount of income. And sanctions have now been applied against the two largest producers of coal in Russia. And the direct impact of that is going to be devastating from Russia's point of view because we're already seeing a reduction in the purchases directly from China and India because as we've discussed in other videos, despite the fact that neither of those countries are applying sanctions against Russia themselves, so they're quite happy to buy things from Russia, what they don't want to do is upset their export markets because China and India are exporting huge volumes of things directly to the West. So they want to keep all of those markets current and alive. And the threat that they're now facing is secondary sanctions. And secondary sanctions is basically a situation whereby the USA and Europe and other countries are saying, we've sanctioned these companies in Russia. If you deal with those companies, then we will apply sanctions against you for trading with those sanctioned businesses. And that's the concern that India and China have now. They're happy to buy that coal. They would happily carry on with these trading arrangements if sanctions hadn't been applied against Suek and Mekel. But because those businesses have now been sanctioned, India and China are saying, OK, we're going to get our coal from somewhere else. And that's a major problem from Russia's point of view because they're losing those sales and there aren't that many other big markets to go for. When one buyer represents more than 50% of the global purchases, you need to have good relationships with that buyer if you're the third largest exporter. And that's the dilemma that Russia now faces. It's producing huge amounts of coal, but the main buyer potentially now is saying, no, thank you. We don't want to buy Russian coal. We'll buy it from Indonesia or Australia or somebody else. And that leaves Russia with a problem because it's going to produce all this coal, but it's not going to have any markets to be able to sell it into. And that's the point of the sanctions. That's what the West is trying to achieve. It's trying to cut off all of the income that Russia is earning from the sale of all of these fossil fuels so that Russia eventually gets to the point where it can't afford to keep funding the war in Ukraine and comes around the table to agree some sort of settlement. That's the point of the sanctions. And what we're seeing now is that those sanctions are being effectively policed and India and China are very nervous about being hit with secondary sanctions. So the overall summary of today's video is that global demand for coal remains high. It's actually at an all time high, the highest it's ever been. The world's biggest buyer of coal is China, closely followed by India. Both of those countries are now concerned about the sanctions that have been applied against the Russian coal industry. They're reducing their purchases of Russian coal, and that represents really bad news for Russia and the Russian economy. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. You found it useful, informative, and thought-provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end, and here's something to put a smile on your face.